This week's movies, The Miserable, West of Memphis, and Django Unchained. I like the way you die, boy. Oh. I lived my whole life here in Candyland, surrounded by black faces. Directed by Quentin Tarantino, Django Unchained is a revenge fantasy set in the antebellum south. Bullseye. In his review, A.O. Scott writes, the realm of the archetypal is where popular culture lives, and Mr. Tarantino does not hesitate to train his revisionist energies on some deep and ancient national legends. I'm getting dirty. Django Unchained is crazily entertaining, brazenly irresponsible, and also ethically serious in a way that is entirely consistent with its playfulness. So when the hand-wringing starts about Django Unchained, ask yourself why the violence in this movie is so much more problematic, so much more regrettable, than what passes without comment in popular films. Your boss looks a little green around the gills. I'm just a little more used to Americans than he is. What you see in Django Unchained is moral disgust with slavery, instinctive sympathy for the underdog, and an affirmation of what used to be called brotherhood. Y'all ain't gonna make it out of this county alive. Ah! Yes, the virtuous Fontaine, who keeps herself so pure and clean. You'd be the cause, I had no doubt, of any trouble here about. You play a virgin in the light, but need no urging in the night. She's been laughing at you while she's having a mess. She's been nothing but trouble again and again. You must sack it to sack the girl today. Right, my girl, on your way. Directed by Tom Hooper. The Miserable brings the long-running musical based on Victor Hugo's novel to the big screen. In her review, Manola Dargis writes, As relationships and rebellion bloom, you wait in vain for the movie to as well, and for the filmmaking to rise to the occasion of both its source material and its hard-working performers. Mr. Hooper can be very good with actors, but his inability to direct a scene without tilting or hurtling or throwing the camera around is bludgeoning and deadly. By the grand finale, when tout le monde is waving the French tricolor in victory, you may instead be raising the white flag in exhausted defeat. I had a dream my life would be So different from this hell I'm living Three young boys murdered in cold blood. It appeared that they had been sexually mutilated. In 1994, three West Memphis, Arkansas teenagers were wrongfully convicted of a triple homicide and spent the following 17 years in prison. West of Memphis tells their story. In his review, Stephen Holden writes, The film is inspiring because it has a semi-happy ending attached to a love story. It is infuriating because, in the deal that was worked out, the state of Arkansas agreed to accept an Alford plea, whereby the defendants could assert their innocence and go free, while still pleading guilty. Even more angering than the partial vindication is the film's vision of unequal justice in America. The men might still be rotting away in prison, were it not for the support from filmmakers and celebrities who rallied around their cause. It was the kind of defense that only the rich can afford. The case may be closed, but it isn't. Really. You're dealing with three kids who were bottom of the barrel, poor white trash that nobody's ever going to ask another question about. He thought they would say guilty, this whole thing would be swept under the rug, the state would kill me, Jason and Jesse would spend the rest of their lives in prison. 